Hello and welcome back. In the previous video, we understood about Kafka brokers. How Kafka brokers help us store incoming events inside the Kafka cluster. In this video, we are going to focus on organizing this data that is coming into Kafka. So let us go back to our previous example. So Kafka brokers are responsible for holding all the events that are coming in from our producers. The next question that arises is, how do you categorize these events so that accessing them will become easier? Now, with the same example, we'll try to understand this. So, let us focus on the station status consumer report. Now, if you want to get this information alone, we need to connect to one of the events coming from the producers, correct? Now, how do we know where this event is? For this, we have to make sure that when our producers are producing these events, they get produced and stored in a categorized manner. And this is what we call as a topic. As we can see from this example, the EV charging station is sending all the events to a topic called as EV underscore charging underscore topic. And charging station is sending all the events to a topic called as station underscore metrics underscore topic. Hence, topic is a logical way of organizing and categorizing the Kafka messages. That's it. So, it is not a physical concept like broker. When we create a Kafka cluster, the first thing that we create is a bunch of brokers. And then what we create is a Kafka topic. These two form a building block for us to start sending the events to Kafka and also start consuming these events from Kafka. Now, just like Kafka brokers, you also have features for Kafka topics. Now, what are those features? We will try to understand that now. First up, let us talk about message categorization. Kafka topics are all about grouping related messages logically. Think of topics as containers that hold messages of a similar type, like emails, logs, or IoT sensor data coming from respective devices. You can create as many topics as you need to organize your data streams effectively. Kafka doesn't impose a hard limit on the number of topics you have, but there are practical limits based on your cluster resources. For example, each topic creates metadata overhead. So, if you have tens of thousands of topics, you might need to tweak settings on your brokers to handle the load efficiently. With messages neatly categorized, let us explore what makes Kafka topics so reliable for processing those messages in the right order. Moving on to the next feature, it is immutable locks. Everything in Kafka that gets stored is in the format of a log. In Kafka, messages within a topic are stored sequentially in an immutable log. Once a message is written to a topic, it cannot be changed. This sequential storage ensures that consumers can process messages in the exact order they were produced, which is critical for a use case like financial transaction or event sourcing. Here is an interesting fact. The immutability of Kafka logs is tied to its retention settings. You can configure how long messages are retained either by time, like 7 days, or by size, let's say 1 GB. But here is a tip. If you set retention too low, you might lose data before consumers can process it. So, always align your retention settings with your application needs. Now that we know messages are stored sequentially, let us see how Kafka topics enable collaboration 
between different components of our system. Next, we have multi-consumer access. Kafka topics allow multiple consumers to read from the same topic without interfering with each other. This means you can have different applications like a fraud detection system and a reporting dashboard consuming the same data stream independently. Each consumer keeps track of its own position in the topic using offsets, ensuring smooth and decoupled access. Next up is about decoupled communication, which we just spoke about. Kafka topics enable producers and consumers to interact through topics not directly with each other. Producers write the message to a topic and consumers read from the topic at their own pace. This decoupling is what makes Kafka so powerful for building scalable asynchronous system. You don't need to worry about synchronizing producers and consumers. They operate independently through the topic. Finally, we have the concept of replication. Kafka topics ensure data availability by replicating the messages across different brokers. Well, we will be understanding the concept of replication in much more details in the future video. And there you have it. Five key aspects of Kafka topic that make them the backbone of your data stream. From categorization to replication, topics provide the structure and reliability you need for real-time data processing. Let us now use a UI to create a Kafka topic. So let me go back to my Kafka UI now. So here I am on my Kafka cluster. So here let us click on topics and click on add a topic and give a name for the topic. I'm going to say Kafka Lab. As you saw me typing, so the Kafka name needs to follow a certain format. So the moment I give a space here, it is giving me another. So let's say Kafka Lab here. Number of partition, we are going to say one, and then the retention as seven days, that's it. Well, what are these configuration? Why is it important? Again, we're going to dive deep into each of these configuration in more detail in future videos. For now, let us create a simple topic and click on create topic, and that's all. So we have our Kafka topic created. Now, can we create a Kafka topic also using a CRM? Definitely, we can. But this is where the UI comes handy. If you're practicing something, if you're developing something locally, setting up this Kafka UI is going to make things much easier. Well, that is how easy it is to create a Kafka topic using the Kafka UI. That is it for this video. Speak with you in the next video. Thank you.